In this video, we continue with the Spring OAuth 2 series. Today we have five apps working together into one project. We have two Spring Authorization Servers, two Spring Resource Servers, and one Spring OAuth 2 client communicating with each other. In this video, we have to make a lot of code work together. We start with the code for the first Spring Authorization Server. First, we have the Maven Palm XML file. Spring Boot Starter version 3.0.2 .2, Java version 17 And the following dependencies. Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Security OAuth 2 Authorization Server version 1.0.0. In the Application Properties file we have the server port 9000. And finally the Security Config class. This is largely the same code from the previous videos. Two security filter chain methods. To keep it simple we use again an in-memory user details manager and the no-op password encoder then the registered client repository with client ID client secret scopes redirect URL the URL here ends with server 1 client authentication method and the authorization grant types in addition we have the following beans authorization server settings JWT decoder and JWK source to secure the JWT token. We continue with the code of the second Spring Authorization Server. The Maven Palm XML file is completely the same as the first server. In the application properties we have server port 9001, the port number should be different for each app. Finally the security config class, with mostly the same code as the first server. I will just point out the minor differences. In this server we have the in-memory user details manager with user2. And the redirect URL from the registered client ends on server2. Everything else can remain the same. We can now move on to the Spring Resource Servers code. We start with the Maven Palm XML file of the first Spring Resource Server. As always, the Spring Boot version 3.0.2 .2, and Java version 17. Further, we have the following dependencies Spring Boot Starter Web, Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Resource Server, then the application properties, Server Port 8090, and the Spring Auto Configure excludes so that Spring Boot does not create a security user. We then have the security config class. Here we configure the two Spring authorization servers. We need to create a JWT issuer authentication manager resolver with the addresses of both Spring authorization servers. Localhost with port 9000 and localhost with port 9001. We then need to log the JWT Issuer Authentication Manager Resolver into the OAuth 2 resource server. Finally, there is the Home Controller. We return Spring Resource Server 1 and the date with time. We can now move on to the code of the Spring Resource Server 2. The Palm XML file is completely the same as in the first resource server. In the application properties, we have the server port 8091, again a different port number. The security config class is completely the same as in the first resource server. Last, we have the home controller. Here we return Spring Resource Server 2 with date and time. The last app to discuss is the Spring OAuth 2 client. We start in the Maven Palm XML file. Spring Boot version 3.0.2 .2 and Java version 17. And the dependencies. Spring Boot Starter Web. 
Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Client Spring Boot Starter WebFlux and Mombot. Then the application properties. Server port 8080. And all the configuration of both Spring authorization servers. This data should match the registration client data in the Spring authorization servers. We have Provider Client ID Client Secret Scope Authorization Grant Type Redirect URL And the Issuer URL Then we have the interfaces of the web clients. Note the HTTP exchange annotation with the addresses of the first Spring Resource Server. The second interface is the same, just the HTTP exchange annotation with the address of the second Spring Resource Server. Then the Web Client Config class. With a bean for both Web Client interfaces and the HTTP Service Proxy Factory. The last bean is the OAuth2 Authorized Client Manager. The security config class is very simple with the defaults for OAuth2 login and OAuth2 client. The last class is the welcome controller. Here we load the welcome message from Spring Resource Server 1 and the message from Spring Resource Server 2 and return everything with the name of the logged in user. This was all for the code. We can now launch the five apps and look at the result in a browser window. We have started all apps and are now looking in a browser window. We are automatically redirected to a Spring Boot login window asking which Spring authorization server we want to log into. If we choose the first Spring authorization server we are automatically redirected to the login window of this server and we can log in with user1 and the password. We then get the answer from the Spring OAuth2 client with the messages from both Spring resource servers. If we return to the login window of the Spring OAuth2 client, we can choose Spring Authorization Server 2. Now we have to log in with user 2 and the password. We then get the response from the Spring OAuth2 client with the messages from both Spring Resource Servers, but now with the user 2. This was it for this video. Thanks for following.